got in this position in the first place. During the scene with Dog Day, he was talking about how he was the last of the smiling critters, but for some reason he was still alive and chained up to the wall with his legs completely missing. Now for the other members of the smiling critters, I'm led to believe that Catnap killed them off immediately after realizing that they weren't being controlled by the prototype, as mentioned by Ollie in one of the scenes. In Catnap's eyes, the prototype is a superhero and has saved this place. So Catnap treats him like a god, killing everyone that opposes him. And it seems like the prototype's control doesn't affect everyone as intended. So for specific toys, they have to use different methods. And for Dog Day, he was probably unlucky enough to still be alive when Catnap found us after the train crash. So we ate off his legs and prepared him for the evil transformation, which looks like it has something to do with an already converted toy or a mass of them affecting you through your insides in some way. But this might just be one of the ways that prototype control can be put onto others, as it's pretty unlikely that this happened for every toy. And for my first theory, I'm gonna say that the smiling critters merge together inside of Dog Day to form this one full being that's completely capable of controlling him. As if you look at the scene where they all go inside of him, it looks like there's way too many for them to have their own space, as most went in through the bottom half and one even went through his eyes. And if you look at the way Dog Day moves after the transformation, you can see that his movements aren't random, or at least not of someone who's being controlled by multiple things at once, like a puppet with a bunch of strings attached. And this is most likely because the smiling critters inside of him manage to put themselves into one another and become the host of Dog Day's body. As well, after possessing Dog Day, you'll see that he goes from having fully black eye sockets with no pupils to suddenly having white pupils. And you don't see the smiling critters protruding anywhere inside of him because again, a lot of them went inside and it looks to be way too many to fit. But what makes this theory the least likely to have happened is the fact that if the smiling critters were to have merged inside of him, he would have still had his mind intact and he still would be able to talk to us during the chase. And once he's completely transformed, his voice even changes as whenever he jump scares us, this is what he sounds like. And for my second theory, I'm gonna say that the smiling critters ate Dog Day's insides to replace what they consumed. The main driving force behind me thinking that this might be true is what Dog Day was explaining to us. As before he got transformed, he mentioned that the smiling critters are watching us with empty stomachs, saying that they want nothing more than to crawl beneath our skin and eat away at us bit by bit and fill what feels empty inside themselves. A million pairs of eyes are on you now. Watching, waiting, hungry. They want nothing more than to crawl beneath your skin and eat away at you bit by little bit. Fill what feels empty inside themselves. And once the smiling critters arrive, the cries of agony that Dog Day makes is most likely them doing exactly what he was just talking about, eating away at him until he's nothing but a husk, allowing them to take full control of his body. As well, right before he's completely possessed, you can hear him choking, gargling, and he can't even talk. <laughs> And this is probably due to the fact that they ate away at his vocal cords, to the point where it just sounds scratchy and unrecognizable. Now this leads to the question, why would the smiling critters want to do that, not only to Dog Day, but to anyone that isn't under prototype's control? Well, if you listen to what Dog Day says before he gets possessed, the only reason they're behaving this way is out of fear that the prototype will treat them the same way they treated Dog Day, as he will kill anyone that doesn't follow his beliefs or fights his control. So they serve under Catnap, who is also under the prototype, and as a reward for their obedience, they are fed the toys and staff who are against the prototype. That thing, Catnap, the prototype is his god, and this is what he does to heretics. These little toys follow Catnap to avoid that very fate, and in return, they are fed. You can also pair this with the Hour of Joy, as when you get to the end of the chapter, you meet up with Poppy, and she talks to us about the Hour of Joy. She presents the tape to us and plays it for us to watch on the TV, 
and you can see all of the experimented toys becoming sentient and killing every single staff member in the building, except us of course. But what stuck out to me is the fact that Poppy explains that the toys took everyone down to the bottom of the building after the killing to eat them, and the smiling critters is probably repeating that same behavior. And for all of the toys, after they got experimented on, they felt like they were missing something, and the only thing they felt was able to fill that hole was to kill and consume anything that wasn't a toy. All of that death didn't fix anything. And then, once it was all over, they dragged those corpses down below where they'd never be found. And they ate the bodies to stay alive. And later, it became anything that wasn't a part of Prototype's control. And now for my last theory, and I'm gonna say that the smiling critters overrided Dog Day's mind with their evil, which is the same evil that Catnap and the Prototype has. As when they ended up possessing Dog Day, you can see that they have complete control over him and there's no sign of him being able to fight back. He's gone completely and now his only objective is to pursue and kill us. But I'm led to believe that he wasn't completely dead during the chase scene, as he's still able to move and since his movements didn't look puppet-like, his thoughts thoughts and intentions have most likely been overrided by the smiling critters. As well, you can see him going from trying to fight back to immediately pursuing the player, showing that his mind is only on one thing, and that's killing us. But this also goes back to the hour of joy, as Poppy explained that everything that happened was just senseless murder and something just snapped inside of all of the toys and that's what caused all of the killing. And that evil and murderous intent looks to be transferable as Dog Day goes from being an ally to becoming a mindless murderer. Now earlier I did mention how I'm led to believe that Dog Day wasn't completely dead during the chase scene, but right after the scene finishes and we manage to escape Dog Day via a jump pad, you can hear Dog Day screaming in the background and this could mean a bunch of different things. Firstly, the screams don't actually sound like Dog Day and it seems to be some demented form or cry of agony from the smiling critters finally killing him off like the rest of the crew after realizing that we escaped. It could also be a cry of frustration from the smiling critters that we escaped, which means that the prototype will kill them for not catching us the same way he killed Catnap at the end of the chapter. Or it could just be the noises of the transformation fully completing, but this is unlikely since Dog Day seemed to have already been converted. But let me know why you guys think Dog Day got possessed down in the comments. Thanks for watching.